You know, a lot of people would think that talking about the Resident Evil 4 remake would make sense in March since it came out then. But not me, I'm an idiot. And I decided that this time October would be the best time to talk about it, ignoring all the other releases that came out between now and then. Yes, that should really get the views in and really get people liking what you have to say common, says the green raccoon on my shoulder whispering in my ear. But in all seriousness, this video was supposed to come out in March this year, but due to some issues out of my control, I was only get this video out now. I apologize, and unfortunately, due to me not being able to spare any other time, I won't be talking about the recently released DLC and basically the base game. But in any case, I hope you all enjoy this video. Enjoy the difference in audio quality, folks. In light of the high quality remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3 released in 2019 and 2020, it felt like a safe bet that Capcom would do an equally admirable job of rebuilding Resident Evil 4. Even so, when I hit the start button on the 2023 remake of the legendary 2005 action horror game, I wasn't prepared for that first story of what the movie was When you consider the previous remakes that Resident Evil have been making as of late, they have at the very least a mixed reception. Resident Evil 2 Remake was found to be a great addition to the series, meanwhile RE3 Remake wasn't as great. They massacred my boy, Nemesis, no! Here's the thing with those two remakes. They essentially took a lot of inspiration from Resident Evil 4, the game that essentially changed the entire franchise for better or worse. Whether that's a good or bad thing is going to be up to interpretation and something that I'm not above my myself. To point out, I do not think the remake of Resident Evil 4 is bad. In fact, I'd say it's good. Really good. But is it a masterpiece like the original? Here's the thing when you use that terminology like that. The word masterpiece in gaming is one that is really thrown around quite a bit. One of the earlier examples of Masterpiece was used with The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Yet you always hear the caveat of, oh, but the Water Temple sucks. Then we had Resident Evil 4 itself being labeled as a Masterpiece, and for good reason. Masterpieces in gaming are trendsetters or take the media in a different direction. Hell, a lot of games adopted the Resident Evil 4 model and acted as inspiration for a lot of games. Some of the most notable examples would be Gears of War, Dead Space, and The Last of Us. Resident Evil 4 inspired a lot of games, revolutionized over-the-shoulder gameplay, and influenced a lot of survival horror elements. Fun fact though, Resident Evil 4 wasn't all that scary of a game. At least to me it wasn't. That's not a death nail to me. I grew up on this game. After all, I was a GameCube kid. I played the game on multiple platforms. I have the Steelbook Edition. I play it all the time on the Switch. Now, from the way I'm talking, you're probably thinking that I prefer the original over the remake because of nostalgia reasons. No, that is not the case. Each version of Resident Evil 4 has its strengths and weaknesses, and I don't think there's a definitive way to really play either game. I think both versions accomplish the same thing, but do it differently. It's all a matter of preference at the end of the day. I could easily play either game, but since we're talking about the new thing, I think it's a safe bet to say that we'll be talking about it in a video right now. Now that we've got that settled, hi, I'm Manga Comment. I'm your latest and god knows how many people are talking about the remake, but hey, that's not gonna stop me. Spoilers, I suppose, we'll be talking a lot about the game in depth, so heads up on that. Naturally, when it comes to remakes, there's always going to be a need for a comparison between it and the original. It's inevitable, much like death, the government screwing up, or Pokemon fans throwing a tantrum whenever the newest games come out. I won't be much of an exception here, and while I'm not the master of Resident Evil 4, I can tell you there are quite a few differences. Some good, some bad, and some that are just modernized. Just because a remake does something different from the original, that doesn't automatically mean it's good or bad, or better or worse. One thing I noticed while doing some research on other people's reviews of this game was that there were a lot of people that were saying that the remake improved upon the original's gameplay. I like to be honest with you guys and say I don't agree with that notion. This isn't me saying that it's worse than the remake but the game has been modernized. Hell, if anything, the game honestly reminds me of the gameplay of Last of Us and Last of Us 2. They added things such as stealth and stealth attacks, weapon durability, and various other tidbits and changes here and there. There were also changes to characters. Luis was now given a bit more character development, and you get to spend more time with the character in the game. Ashley's been changed quite a bit as well, and Ada is... You can stop right there, Leon. Different. And other elements such as the more goofier moments and calls between you and the bad guys are removed. Oh, Mr. Kennedy, you entertain me! Here's the thing with both games. They do share elements and they do have different gameplay styles, but much like how I have stated in things such as my Temtem review years ago, just because you do something different, that doesn't automatically mean it's superior. Fuck you! Different doesn't mean improvement or inferiority. The problem I have is saying that this game is superior to the original, and thus there isn't a reason to play the original. Now, having played the original before the remake came out, and having my own fun time in the remake, I don't agree with that notion. Nor do I think there's a definitive way to play either game. You can certainly think that 
that one is better than the other, preferences are always a thing. You can think Ashley's original voice actress was annoying and channels a bit more sandy cheeks than you like. Talk about near-death experience. And that the newer version makes her a lot more tolerable. I'm so scared. <laughs> and I'll greatly agree with that. Granted, I never really found the original Ashley annoying, but that's a me thing. There are key differences and things that are personal tastes. Let's give an example. Let's compare the first encounters in both games. In the original, you're actually allowed to attack the Ganado through the gameplay, which allows the player to have an idea on how the gunplay works, as well as showing that you can stun the enemies if you place your shots right. Please. Meanwhile, the remake regulates the entire scene as a cutscene, which takes away the interactivity. But what about the basement? It's a scene right after the remake that occurs in the basement, where it introduces the Ganado the Senado as the actual first enemy. That'd be a good point, jerk, but that's not really the same thing. On the surface, I like the Destinados when they are added to the game. It acts as a foreshadowing from the Plagas actually do start bursting out of the villagers' heads. It really gives me a fun image when I see a Twitter user losing their marbles. However, for it being the very first enemy, it feels like the game plays its hand a bit too early. Especially when it's already established that there was already something wrong with the villagers. Well, they find the policeman's bloody badge, being attacked, and then the policeman's mangled body. Yeah, I hate Mondays too. Mind you, I bring this up not to say that it's bad. I bring this up as that it is a different take and one that I personally don't like. Subjectivity is a thing, and I need to clarify a few things. Namely, my gameplay, time, and what difficulty I was on. I'm not the greatest when it comes to shooters, but I did manage to complete the game on standard difficulty and managed to accrue about 20 hours in my playthroughs. I'm currently going through a second playthrough on Hardcore, and I've already noticed quite a bit of differences. But more on that later. I played on PC, but as I dislike playing on a keyboard, I use a controller. Bruh. Bruh. Real Yakuza use a game pad. Stop it. Get some help. You ever forget that games need gameplay to be games? Seems like it's becoming a foreign concept nowadays. The original Resident Evil 4, as I stated previously, was known to be a trailblazer for a lot of future titles, and even revolutionized the over-the-shoulder gameplay style that a lot of games adopted after that. To be blunt, Resident Evil 4 Remake feels like more like it's adapting to the games that were inspired by the original. We have elements such as being able to move around while aiming, breakable defensive weapons, stealth, the use of darkness, and parrying. God damn parrying. I'm kinda getting sick of games having parrying mechanics. Even Sonic the Hedgehog has a parrying mechanic in a game. Since I'm complaining about it, let's talk about the parry system. At first, it's an interesting concept and a little ridiculous how you can block chainsaws with a dinky little knife. Entertaining for sure, though. However, as the game went on, I found myself using it less and less. The only times that the game actually required me to use the parry system was against Krauser in his two fights. Other than that, I found myself relying on the guns more often than not to actually take out enemies before they got too close. This game is about shitty shitty bang bang. Throw in the new movement system while aiming, and if you're smart enough to figure out the enemies, you can relatively clear out areas easily. Again, that parrying system can be interesting, but it feels a little underutilized when there's only two actual fights they can be used effectively on. I found knives to be a bit more of a defensive tool than anything else if an enemy actually got their mitts on me. And the knives have durability to them, which is a change from the original RE4 and was adopted from the RE2 remake. Survival horror games are all about the idea of maintaining your resources, where you had to maintain your ammo and healing items. In RE2, knife durability was a fun mechanic because it fed into the gameplay loop. It was a slower game than RE4 Remake, and you don't have to fight against waves of enemies as well as there being a looping hub level design. Back in that game, when you used the knife, it got stuck in the enemy and took damage, and you had a choice. Do you take the damage and use heals, or do you use the defensive weapon and lose it? If you decide to leave it, thanks to the hub design, you can always come back and get it from the zombie if you put them down. In RE4 Remake, it feels more like attacked on resource management especially since the knives don't get stuck in the enemies, and while there's some looping and backtracking in the game, you don't need to go back and get the knives. In the original, the knife was an unlimited resource that was actually kind of risky to use, since you had to get in close into the enemies, and in the harder difficulties, it was used for ammo conservation, since the bosses ate a lot more ammo, which in RE4 Remake, ammo was really given out a lot more. I'm sure on harder difficulties that's different, especially with the fact that enemies would become damage sponges as well as them item upgrades but costing much more. While playing on standard mode, I never once really ran out of ammo totally. And this might be due to the case effect where handgun ammo would be more prominent to collect, but the game was really willing to make sure you had the proper ammo. Not saying it's a bad thing, but it really kinda goes against the whole survival horror aspect. Even more so when we consider the dodge mechanic. 
Well, I say it's a dodge mechanic, but it's more like you're crouching down and not an actual dodge button in the game. I don't understand why we don't have a dedicated dodge button when you include a lot more modern game mechanics. When I say modern day mechanics, I bring up the more standard mechanics. Stealth, parrying, crafting, etc. It's not a bad thing per se, but when you leave out a key component, it feels a little missing. There are times where you have to do a dedicated dodge because the game alerts you to some attacks. Again, this is not a detriment to the game, much like any game you need to get used to the control. I did have a little bit of an issue while aiming, nothing too egregious save for when dealing with regenerators. Like whenever I would line up the shot, the shakiness would make me be off target. I don't know what was going on there, but it made them a lot more annoying to kill than in the original. Could be a skill issue since I have the eyesight of a bat in the hands of a gremlin, but who knows. Aside from the in-game prompts, quick time events were removed from the remake. If you for some reason don't know quick time events, then you'd know that they were the bane of gamers for at least a decade since they occurred in, with Resident Evil 4 popularizing them. However, they were used for a lot of other games, such as Dragon's Lair, a Berserk game, and notably Shenmue. Bye bye, boy! This may be a controversial opinion, but I like QTEs. And a lot of people from what I've seen will boil down the fact that the knife fight between Leon and Krauser, QTEs are a double-edged sword as in the case of this particular one. It forces the player to pay attention to the cutscene to make sure they can hit the correct button in time, and in turn forces the player to listen to the discussion between the two, and fills in some of the missing links of the story. On the other hand, with QTEs, your attention is drawn away from the animation, which kind of renders the effort put into the animation of the fight to be rendered moot. There was also the fact that if you fail the QTE, you'd be forced to do it again, which I don't think is too terrible of a complaint since you're able to immediately get back to the start of the scene and don't lose a lot of progress in that. In the remake, the QTEs are gone, and while we're not talking about presentation at the moment, I feel them sorely missed due to how they actually did have a lot of memorable moments in the game for me. Like, I used the example of Krauser and Leon for this, and while I can appreciate the fact that we have an actual boss fight between the two at this point, I prefer the original since I find it to be paced a lot better and its camera work really makes the scene a lot more memorable with the fight between the two. Hell, it takes less time to do the original than in the remake. On a side note, I do like a lot of the bosses. They're mostly adapted to fit the new gameplay. However, I feel as though Salazar's boss fight was a bit too much. What with his movements being fast, him leaving goo mines, you don't have a lot of time to actually hit him before he closes his maw, but apparently you can kill Ramon with two golden eggs. No wonder people get sick of YouTubers making food analogies. This isn't really the section I want to go into this, since I do want to talk about presentation and tone in another section, but know that I will bring this up later. Cause now I want to talk about stagger and stealth. Most people when they hear the word stagger know exactly what I'm about to say. Back in the original, when you shot your enemy in the head, there was a chance to stagger them and allow you to run forward and kick them. It was a simple yet fun mechanic that was good for crowd control. The remake isn't as guaranteed. Sometimes when you shoot an enemy in the head, there's a chance to make them stagger. But on higher difficulties, it was really common for me to shoot someone in the head until their head exploded before they would stagger. It creates an inconsistency in the combat loop that wasn't in the original. And you know what's worse? Leon staggers. Yeah, if he gets hit, he'll stagger for quite a bit, but it's possible you to get staggered into death because at times he won't be able to actually respond to your controls. This stuff really makes the harder difficulties a slog to get through to the point where there are guides telling people to exploit some glitches to get past certain sections of the game, which Capcom has already begun patching. Smooth move there, Grandpa. Suck my dick. I feel as though stealth in this kind of game could work, but I feel like it's a bit undercooked. I don't know if it was me or something, but one thing I wished I could have done was aim while crouched down while stealthing, so I didn't have to give away my position if I wanted to attack someone from afar, or use the crouch to steady a shot if I wanted to go more long range like in other games. And really, all you're getting is a crouch that also acts as a pseudo dodge button. My point is, I really don't get the idea of stealth in this game, especially when it's been limited quite a bit. If I could make a comparison to say, Metal Gear Solid 3, a game that I think has done some of the best stealth mechanics for years, and can't really say that a lot for other games can match in a category. You could crouch to stay to your aim, you could get on your stomach to hide in tall grass, you could camouflage, you could throw items to distract enemies. <laughs> nice. While stealth is nice in a game like this, I never really utilized it and it really didn't help me out at all that much. Heck, even the section where you play as Ashley, I mostly just ran away instead of just using stealth to get past the parasite riddled armors. 
I know there are sections where stealth can be used, and you have a stealth attack that can help clear out some of the enemies with your knife, but again, I never felt a need to use stealth when guns will do just fine. This is worthless. And then there's the darkness. Can't see fucking shit out of this thing. I'm bringing this up in gameplay section because it does affect gameplay. It's been a recent trend in not only the Resident Evil games, but a lot of modern day horror games. It's supposed to help instill a sense of dread and uneasiness. But in RE4 Remake, it's more or less an annoyance, and it makes it a bit hard to see unless you have the flashlight on, which is a scripted asset. I say all of this not to say the original was better. If anything, the original is a little more or less based upon the arcade shooters where you had to be planted on the ground, and enemies did slow down when they approached you to give you time to actually aim carefully and shoot. But you still had to be aware of your surroundings before you launched your attack. It was a risk-reward system, and you had to be extremely efficient with your ammo. While I'm not trying to say the new version of the gameplay is bad, like I said, it's a different kind of gameplay and I disagree that it's the definitive version of the game because it changes drastically from the original. One big change is Ashley, in a gameplay sense. I understand that it's a meme that has persisted to this very day that people will say that Ashley was annoying and as an escort mission was terrible. It's almost like speaking in a foreign language with these people. Ashley always stayed behind you, never got in the way, always did what she was told, and if she was in trouble, that was on you. Yes, you. Because in the remake, you can't tell Ashley to wait unless you find her a hiding spot. Otherwise, you're just stuck with her being tight or loose. And God, I just realized how dirty that sounds. Oh, you pervert. But here's the thing. There's always a gap between the two of you, whether tight or loot, and that allows for there to be more openings for her to be grabbed. Hell, you may think that the original Ashley was annoying, but at least she didn't get caught on things. I'd also be remiss if I didn't bring up some of the cut content. This will be more apparent when we get to presentation, characterization, and tone, but one of the biggest removals was the U3 boss fight. At the very least, in comparison to RE3 Remake's massive amounts of cut content and attraction from the original, I'm at least glad that RE4 Remake didn't do too much of a drastic cut. In turn, the remake also introduced a shooting minigame where you can get gacha prizes that you can hook onto your case that'll give you bonuses, a side quest system where you can do things like shooting blue medallions or killing rats to give you spinals that you can trade to get additional items, which you're not gonna go out of your way to do since that can be done along the way, and treasure keys that allow you to backtrack and get more treasures. I will say, with the gacha game, I hate that you can get duplicates and it's completely at random. I enjoyed it, but I disagree that it's an objective upgrade from the original. Well, the only thing I could say as a fin of upgrade is the weapon switching on the fly, but considering that you still have to open the menu to craft ammo and spend a fair amount of time in there, it really feels like more of a trade-off more than anything else. If anything, because the original Resident Evil 4 was so solid, this was a basis to branch out into different gameplay styles. It gives you more options, but aiming wasn't quite as accurate as it was, and some guns had noticeable accuracy dips. While the gameplay is solid, it certainly is more akin to modern video game standards, but that doesn't objectively mean it's better. Like the use of all the yellow that signifies you can interact with things, the visual clarity of things to the point of who's tagging all these things with yellow paint and why? Now that's a problem with modern gaming, but it's not one that I'm holding the remake to. The original RE4 had constraints, yes, and limitations, but every game has its limitations in gameplay. It's more or less up to the player to conform to the game's rules in order to play and work around them to be effective. If anything, the RE4 remake is just playing to a different set of rules that have their own issues in that regard, but that doesn't make either superior or inferior in my opinion. The fact that it's not a one-to-one -one with the original makes me happy to say that since it's doing its own thing too. And that being said, this is probably where I'm going to say that I definitely prefer the original over the remake. And you have to understand, while I do appreciate the new coat of paint on the remake, and my only complaint would be the pop-in of textures whenever I got a good look at focus points, or in one case when I was dealing with Ramon's introduction, the remake does a lot of hard work to be visually appealing. Like, on a visual and technical level, the remake is obviously going to look better. We're talking about an 18 year difference in graphics, and considering that the original Resident Evil 4 was on GameCube, no duh, it's going to look better. And this is something that I need to point out that isn't really a detriment, but I don't really care for the use of darkness in the game. This is something that has been a bit more prominent in the remake of previous Resident Evil games, and while it works and doesn't work to certain degrees, I don't feel it does a lot for Resident Evil 4. Now hold on, let me explain. Resident Evil can elicit a scare out of people every once in a while. Bro. However, in comparison to, say, its contemporary Silent Hill, Resident Evil wasn't all that scary of a series. Resident Evil 4 was more for that, considering it was more of a hammy action B flick. There's a religious cult group involved. They're called the Los Illuminados. Los Illuminados? 
That's a mouthful. RE4 adopted that goofiness that came with the series, whereas before it was sometimes done unintentionally. It was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. But when Resident Evil 4 came out, it really embraced the goofiness and made a gem. Sure, you're not going to get a game that's going to have the deepest story, but that didn't matter. It was a fun game, and it knew what it was. The more serious tone, however, in RE4 Remake, it takes away part of the charm with the darkness being a bit symbolic of that point as it covers up what made the original shine with its tone and writing. As a result, the remake, when it tries to be scary, it isn't, and when it tries to go with the goofier elements, they don't have the same punch as they did in the original. Leon being a prime example, because in this, Capcom really tried to play up the PTSD angle, something that they did before with Jill in the RE3 remake, but like in that, doesn't really come into play. If anything, it makes a line like this... Where's everyone going? Bingo? Pale in comparison to the original. Where's everyone going? Bingo? Throw in the fact that the original played around with its camera and action work more often in the scenes, as well as Paul Mercier's work with the character really played into the game's more lighthearted nature. And I'm not saying that Nick... I'ma say... Apostolids? I'm not saying he did a bad job. Hell, he's continuing the work from the RE2 remake, and his voice work is stellar. But the execution and tone of the lines just really don't fit for a game like this. Paul's deliberately had a lot more confidence behind it and really gives the character a lot of charisma. Maybe it's because Resident Evil 4's earliest incarnation was used to make Devil May Cry with Dante as the lead character. This party's getting crazy. Let's rock. And there was a bit of residue from Dante's coolness rubbed off on Leon but it really did work well for the B-movie vibe that Resident Evil 4 brought to the table. Leon, while having some of his snark, doesn't have that same confidence, and when he says the lines, they come off as less impactful in the remake. And I need to stress that RE4, a game that came out over 18 years ago, almost two decades at this point, is a product of its time. I see that the president's equipped his daughter with ballistics, too. How rude! And I don't believe there's any relevance with my figure and my standing. Hey, I see you found your missing senorita. Senorita has a name, is Ashley. Now, obviously, I don't approve of the line itself, but in the context wow. of the OG game, it does a fair bit of characterization for both Luis and Ashley, since Ashley in the original didn't stand for that kind of insult, instantly calling out his BS and made the audience think about Luis as a character since, again, before this scene, he kind of left us to die. Oh, come on, honey. Also, for a brief scene, it tells us a lot about Luis. He likes the ladies, he makes poor choices, and can get under your skin. And he also diffused a bit of the tension of Leon and Ashley being chased by Ganados and trying to shift their fears with a tonal shift. That isn't to say that Luis doesn't have an improvement in character in the remake. He goes from being a cop to a former Umbrella Incorporation researcher, which makes a lot more sense. And he also gets a lot more scenes that really do make the character more charming. It's the priority. In that case, we know what we have to do. Then come, Sancho Panza. Let us rescue the Princess Dulcinea. You're gonna hurt yourself. Hey, that was my dance. My point is that while you can dislike the line, it was a lot more memorable. It's simple, dirty joke that a lot of people were talking about since the game came out, whether good or bad. And in this, we sacrifice some of the crass humor for modern sensibilities that this scene will just fade away. And again, it's not like the Wii's got away with it in the original. I'm not against the line being taken out. I'm just explaining what replaced it isn't going to have a lot more staying power. Especially since Ashley's response to being called a senorita seems... Off, to say the least. Guess there's no sex discrimination here. And I bring this up because a lot more dialogue was taken away as well. A lot that had a whole lot of charm and memorability to it. Your right hand comes off? Yeah. And that's because the remake really doesn't number to the writing and tone with the villains. And if you got this far in the video, leave a comment. No thanks, bro! In the comments, let me know you got to this point in the video. I'd like to move on to one of the other more memorable scenes that shows this quite well. I don't know if you can say it's a villain per se, but the Del Lago scene in the remake is really disappointing. 
Like, not only for some reason does it go first person, which alerts the player that, hey, something's gonna happen, but the poles on either side of the monster just disappear when it jumps up. I realized this was probably patched, but I got my game after the patch was released, and I still saw this happen in my first playthrough. Ever characters like Ramon Salazar, who looks like he was a reject to Golden Girls, and Sadler, who lost any and all personality and just became a cliched cult leader. Hope you awaken from your world of cliches. A lot of this isn't that RE4's original villains were great. Hell, they were generic back then too. But there was a lot more interactivity between Leon and them, especially through the audio transmissions. I have an idea. Since you're here, why don't I introduce you to it? It should keep you busy. Can't remember the name, huh? A senior moment, perhaps. Oh, the. Uh. <laughs> Enjoy the fun. It really felt like the villains were demoted and lacked the personality that they had in the original since a lot of their scenes were cut in the remake. Some of the best lines in Resident Evil 4 were in the back and forth between Leon and the villains. There are exchanges in the fights between the villains. They're hard to follow though because they essentially become background noise since you have to focus on, well, not dying. Which is probably the biggest issue I have with the tone. It's become a lot more serious and takes out a lot what made the original have that campiness. Which is shocking because RE8 also had a fair bit of campiness to it in comparison to RE7. And don't get me started on Ada's voice acting. You can stop right there, Leon. Would it make me use this? Would you? Man, I don't even know what happened there. Like, say what you will about the design being more practical than in the original, even though the over-the-top nature was the point of Ada being in a dress. That voice is what really clenches it here. And there's the action scenes. Yes, I know a lot of them had QTEs in the original, and they had to be removed along with the QTEs, but there was just something about how the camera moved in the remake that made watching the scenes a bit of a chore. Like, the best way I could explain it is that it felt like a shaky cam, and it's one that I don't really appreciate. The camera work in the original was a lot crisper, and with things like running from the boulder, cutting the ropes so you wouldn't get pulled in with Del Lago, using the grappling hook so you wouldn't get impaled, the laser scene... It really sold this was more action-packed adventure. That isn't to say the remake doesn't have memorable scenes. But overall, it feels disappointing, even more so when the bosses transform. We don't really see their transformations like we did in the original. I know that these are a lot of small things, that's something I'll readily admit, but the small things can really add up. Still, there are highlights in the remake, like this scene. You gotta keep moving forward. We will beat this. Together. I don't know if I can. You can. Just give me a heads up before you stab me next time, okay? <laughs> Leon, I... Thanks. Characterization for characters like Ashley and Luis are greatly improved, which leads me to saying that both versions of the game have strengths. Like I said at the beginning of this video, both versions have their strengths and weaknesses. While I do appreciate weapon switching and the modernized game mechanics, I don't think they have the same level of impact as the original. Just because there's a lot more freedom in mechanics, that doesn't automatically mean that the game is better in that regard. A lot of the campiness and iconic scenes were messed with, but there was some good characterization for two of the side characters. Really, while the Resident Evil 4 remake is a good game, I don't see it as a replacement for the original. Both games are equally fun and have their ups and downs. It all comes to a matter of preference. I will say that this remake is what a remake should be. It takes a lot from the original, doesn't exactly cut from the original too much, but also adds its own spin to things. 
I think this should be a standard for future remakes. Granted, I do wish the snark of Leon was a kneecap, but that's what it is. This game is worth having, but it won't serve as a replacement for the original. But since it's the internet, we have to have these pointless arguments that often lead to people using buzzwords that sound good, but ultimately are just annoying gnats flying around. Oh well, it gives me a reason to drink at least.